Welcome to our Friday night project, The Women in Our Lives. This is part two in my series about the women in the, my life that have affected me. Now, if we sit and we look and we watch and we remember the women in our lives, they help mold us, shape us. There's good things, there's bad things. There's things that we love, we remember, things that touch our heart. And sometimes women in our lives can infuriate us. It's just the way it is, but it molds us into the people we are today. So tonight's pro um, topic is Grandma Stevens. Last week it was Grandma Reichert. And at the end of the video, I'll put a, the link so that you can just pop on over to see Grandma Reichert. Now these are two separate, different women. Grandma Reichert, farm, farm girl. Grandma Stevens, a city girl. Her life was filled with great joy and great sorrow, tragedy, and there was parts that were spectacular. But this made her a strong woman. And she affected my life and the life of my sister and my mother and people around her in so many different ways. Now, Grandma Stevens' first name was Ethel, Ethel Stevens. When she was two years old, was a time in America when influenza, the Spanish flu, was devastating America. Half of the adults in the age range from 20 to 40 died in the United States. It was devastating to the United States. Grandma Stevens, both of her parents died. So she went to live with Grandma Comer, who wasn't really my grandmother, though that's what we called her. Um, but she was my great-grandmother's sister. And there were lots of children that were orphaned then because of the Spanish flu. And so she went to live with Grandma Comer. She was only two, so she became her mother. She grew up with my Aunt Grace. And so they were, though they were cousins, they were really sisters. And the Spanish flu changed the course of her life. And Grandma Comer and her husband, Grandpa Comer, had property. And so that they just grew up there. They grew up together. Thick as thieves. <laughs> now, when my grandma got older, she got married to my Grandpa Stevens. He worked for the railroad in Big Ben in the Black Hills. The railroad doesn't even go through there now. But it was a beautiful place. But it was a time in America and people were poor. And when they had my mother, my mom was, I think, a year old and maybe two. They lived in a, a boxcar, an actual boxcar of the railroad. That's where they lived because people didn't have money like they have now. And so that's an interesting idea. You know, you have a little cook stove, a little cast iron stove and you're living in a boxcar, but people made do when they had to. I find that a fascinating story. Now, World War II comes. My grandfather goes into the war. He's in Europe in August 8th, 1944. So D-Day has just happened that summer. He gets shot and a month later, September 8th, he dies in, in England. My parents have been over to see his grave. So once again, my grandmother is alone. Now she has my, my mother and she has my uncle Stan. She goes to live at Grandma Comer's. Now Grandma Comer lived in the bigger house and they lived in a little house that was right next to the outhouse because they're not indoor plumbing then. Not, not there anyway. There was other places, but not there. And so that's where they lived. And um, when my grandma was young, she worked at Woolworths. She took in laundry. She did different things to, to make an income. In 1946, she remarries. And she remarries Robert Stevens. So she doesn't change her last name. It's the same. Um, 
Robert, Bob, my grandfather, the only grandfather I knew, um, is a nephew to her first husband. And he was a wonderful man. He was a fireman in, uh, in Rapid City, South Dakota. In fact, my father was a fireman until he retired, and my brother was a fireman until he retired. So we have a long history of firemen in our lives. And he was in a fire, my grandpa Stevens, the second one, and had a heart attack, and he ended up dying. And so my grandmother was alone again. Now, by then, she had had my Uncle Dan, of course. He was grown up. I remember when my grandfather died. And she's alone again, and she has to make an income. Now, she was always very artistic, and she did ceramics. And so she started her own ceramic shop in her basement of her house. And she had kilns, and I remember the paints and the, the women coming over and taking classes from her. And so she was really an entrepreneur that she saw the situation and she knew what she had to do. And it, it was a good business. Um, she expanded, she built a garage into her house with an area that I remember in high school going over and helping her pour molds, pour the stuff into the molds um, so that um, it could get, would become bisque so that the women could paint it. And that influenced me. That influenced me with that entrepreneur spirit that no matter what situation, no matter what good or bad or whatever happens to you, you have the ability to change that situation. Now, things I remember about her and her house. She had a huge apple tree in the backyard. Probably that's how I got my love of fruit trees. She had a garden space. Um... It was a beautiful house. I remember when she did her addition onto her house beside, you know, she did the garage and then she did an addition to make the house bigger. And she did that all after my grandfather had passed away, that her business was building um, and growing and being prosperous. And I remember as a young child that I was so impressed that she was by herself. She never remarried again. And she could take a business and grow it. And she never had to leave her house because it was in her basement and in the section of the garage. And I found that very interesting and it helped me understand her more. Now she loved to bake. And she was the one that would take us out, dragging us out to pick choke cherries. I remember one time she baked these cookies they were so phenomenal. They had sour cream in them. And I remember asking her how she made those. I, I was in high school. And she goes, oh, I don't know. I just threw this and that in there. And I said, so you don't have a recipe? She goes, nah, I don't have a recipe. She did that a lot of times. And then I look at myself now. And how many times I, I bake or I do something, I don't have a recipe. It's just like, let's put a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and that will make it taste better. And it's just something that women do. And she, she only lived about maybe a mile, mile and a half from us. We could ride our bicycles down there. I remember spending the night at her house all the time. I remember um, that spending time with her, and I was spending the night one night. I was little. I don't know how big, how old I was. And she must have been complaining, looking at herself in the mirror and saying something about, oh, she didn't like her wrinkles or something. And I said to her, oh, grandma, you're not ugly. It's just your face. And she told people that story over and over and over again. It was just, I, I mean, I was, when I got older, I was almost embarrassed because of it. But it was a funny story. You're not ugly, it's just your face. So <laughs> it was, she was a fabulous woman. Now, this is a picture of her. I think I'm probably, oh, two or four at this time with that picture. Here's a, I didn't have a lot of pictures of her and my mom and my dad are snowbirds and so I couldn't get some other pictures from her. 
And this is a picture. This is when my brother Jerry is born. I'm the little girl in there. I'm four. My grandma's the one squatting. My mom and my dad are in the picture. But I have to tell you, she influenced my life in so many ways. Uh, I, today, look at a situation and go, I can do that, or I can change that, or I can make that work. And I really think that was because of her. Because different times in her lives, tragedy struck. But she lifted herself up from that tragedy. And she... um conquered it. Like so many women in your life, you will see that too. And so the women in our lives affect us. The women in our lives change us. And hopefully we take that and we can affect other women, um, young or old. We can help change them. We can help um, mold them so that they too can spread that. So this is Sandy at Apple Cottage. I hope you stay prof prosperous and have a great week. Next week, we're going to be talking about my Aunt Grace. She's the one that my grandma grew up with. And she influenced my life also. So have a great weekend. And always like, subscribe, share with the world. Put your comments below about the women in your life. How they've affected you. How they've changed you and how you've grown from them.